All right, good morning, everyone. And um, we have three children in the classroom today, and uh, they are going to have their masks on when we sing. And so the first thing we're going to do is, is sing attendance. And usually, as you all know, the three children who are in the classroom and all the people out in TV land, they all know that when I, at the end of attendance, I say, good morning, first grade, are you here? And everyone sings back, Yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. But today, since I have three actual children, and yesterday I had two, um, then today I'm going to call you by name. Your, is your last name Sabin? Oh, actually, I don't need to know your last name. Good morning, Hope. Are you here? Are you stand up? Yes, Mr. Coulter, I'm here. Perfect. And stick and stay standing up. Good morning, Ilan. Are you here? Yes, Mr. Coulter. I am here. Thank you. And you can both put your masks on and stay standing up. Good morning, Sibylla. Are you here? Okay, now stay standing up and I'll say, Good morning, first grade. Are you here? And you can say, Yes, Mr. Coulter. We are here. All right, arms up for the morning verse. Ready? Reach out and give the sun a hug. The sun, you can say it with me, with loving light makes bright for me each day. The heart with sacred power gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I with all my might May love to work and learn. Toward us comes light and strength. From us rise love and thanks. Great. And now keep your um, mask on. And let's do the morning chant, which we haven't done this whole school year so far. We'll start with, I'll say, hey, aloha, no, aina, pa, and then we'll all sing it together. Hey, aloha, no, e, ku, u, aina, pa, all together. E aloha no, e ku aina, aina kama aina, e, I forgot it. Aina kama aina, e ka o hiya, e o mai kama aina pa ki pika kokona, e yo, e yo mai e. Good, that's a good first try. And then um, let's sing There Was an Old Lady. There was an old lady, no, not that one. I wanted to do, I wanted to do the, um, oh yeah. And I wanted to do, I wanted to do, I, I wanted to do the, the animal one. I had a rooster and the rooster pleased me. I fed my rooster on the greenberry tree. My little rooster said, cock a doodle 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 do You can sit down if you like. I had a cat, and the cat pleased me. Get ready to meow. Fed my cat on the greenberry tree. My little cat said, meow. My little rooster said, cock a doodle 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 do I have to have your mask on for singing. I had a dog, and the dog pleased me. I fed my dog on the greenberry tree. Ready to make a dog sound, Sibylla? My, make a dog sound? My little dog said, My little cat said, My little rooster said, cock a doodle doo doodle 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 doo I had a cow, and the cow pleased me. I fed my cow on the greenberry tree. My little cow said, Moo! I didn't hear the cow in the back. Moo! Thank you. I had a, let's see, I had a cow, and the, my little cow said, Moo! My little dog said, Woof, woof, woof! My little cat said, my little rooster said, cock a doodle doo doodle 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 doo I had a horse, and the horse pleased me. I fed my horse on the greenberry tree. My little horse said, 
My little cow said, My little dog said, My little cat said, My little rooster said, Cock a doodle dooey doodly 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 do. Great. All right. Uh, I want to teach you uh, the first part of a poem, and it goes like this. The fairies have never a penny to spend. Ready? Say it back to me. The fairies have never a penny to spend. And my turn. They haven't a thing to put by. Put by means like save. They haven't a thing to put by. Those two lines together. The fairies have never a penny to spend. They haven't a thing to put by. But theirs is the dower of bird and flower. But theirs is the dower of bird and flower. And theirs is the earth and the sky. And theirs is the, say, and theirs is the earth of, and the sky. And theirs is the earth and the sky. So they don't have any money. They don't have a penny to spend or any money to save. But what they have is the world of birds and flowers and earth and sky. So that's the first part of that poem. Let's say the whole thing together if we can. The fairies have never a penny to spend. They haven't a thing to put by. But theirs is the dower of bird and flower. And theirs is the earth and the sky. Great. I will memorize that and learn a little bit more each day. The day and the date, does anybody remember what day it is? Who knows what day of the week it is right now, anybody? Monday. Good guess, that was yesterday. So that means today is the day Friday. after Monday, which is? Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah, Friday is the later, comes later. Tuesday, t -t -t. that's a cursive T, U, E, S. How do you spell day? D, A, Y. Tuesday, and what month is it? Um, uh, November. It's November. It was October last month, and I now it's November, no. My birthday's on November. Oh, that makes it easy to remember. I write no, and O spells no. <laughs> no, November. That's a V. No. Eh. No. That's an E. Mm. B. E R. Bur. November, today, do you happen to know what the date is? I won't expect you to know. What is, what is date? The date is like the number. Oh, I'll give you a hint over here. Here's the calendar. So yesterday was the ninth day of November. So today must be the 10th day. Tenth day. So, and raise your hand if you know how to make a 10. How, can you tell me how to make a 10? One and a zero. Is that what you were going to say? Yeah. Is that what you were going to say? Great. November 10, and I put a comma after it, because I'm now going to write some more numbers. And what year is it? A year. Do you remember what year it is? What, what is Thanksgiving? That's a good guess. Thanksgiving is, is, happens this month. Oh, it's now it's Christmas. No, that's a, that's a, that's, those are holidays. So the year means like, means like, well, I've been saying it's the year 2020, or 2020, so I write it like that. Two, zero, two, zero. See how there's two 20s? And it's kind of similar to 10? 2020. Okay, so today's Tuesday, November 10th, 2020. Can you say that with me? Today is Tuesday, November 10th. 2020. And when I say 10th, I, I put a, I, I'm going to show you my face. 10th, I put a th at the end of it because, and you may take off your mask now that we're not singing. Um, November 10th. Sibylla, will you actually turn that one light switch on back there? See the one that's down? Can you push it up? There's four light switches and one needs to go up and that controls that fan right there. Um, so when I say the word 10th, it's not just November 10. We don't call it November 10. We call it just like if we're lining up, we say I'm first. 
I'm second, I'm third, the next person is fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. And it keeps on going like that. Today is the tenth. And that TH sound is something we're going to talk about more today. So I wanted to point that out. So Tuesday, November 10th, 2020. Would you say it with me? Ready? Today is Tuesday, November 10th, 2020. And the days of the week? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Now, did anybody hear that sound of the days of the week? Which day of the week starts the Thursday? Thursday. Good. Yeah, raise your hand next time. Even though there's only three of you in the classroom, you don't really, it's almost not necessary to raise your hand because there's only three of you. But let's get in the habit of it because when there's 23 of you, it will be too crazy if everyone just says whatever they want, right? All right. Um, Tuesday. Oh, okay. yeah. In Spanish, uh, martes, miércoles. Jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo, lunes, and back to martes. All right, that's the day and the date. Usually we have Auntie Jackie. Oh, I was just thinking, usually by now we have Auntie Jackie, but she was going to be doing something else for a little while, she said, this morning with another grade. I'm going to spin this around so you can see her coming in through the kitchen. Auntie like Jackie, you've been cooking in the kitchen? No. No. You were coming in from the second grade classroom right. from back there. That's what I'm doing. Good morning. Good morning, first graders. So it's since so there's fun. a teacher going to walk past you, you should probably just throw a mask on as she walks past. Yes. Yeah, new routine, but she's coming in the door. All around the classroom. And then morning. you can put it back down. It's, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's good. good morning, Mr. Cook. Good morning, Auntie Jackie. Welcome. Hi, Kiki. <laughs> Guess what? Someone just waved at me. We don't usually get to see you guys wave at us. Yesterday, here's that sunlight coming in that window again. Remember I was talking about the sun is coming in the window today? And like when school started, it didn't shine on me this way. There it is. Hi. We are in garden class. We're talking about the animals that we might know, the different um, insects that we share the garden with. And I invited you guys to draw a picture on your page, what have you got? Does your page look like this? Does your page look like this? You drew, did you draw one? Did you, have you been drawing any pictures yet? Okay, so my invitation is to draw a picture of someone we share the garden with. I mean, it could be, what, what do you think? You, who do we share the garden with? With whom do we share the garden? And then I'm going to call on somebody at home, and I'm going to call on somebody in our classroom. So we've been talking about it. Imagine, close your eyes and go in the school garden. Close your eyes or go in your own garden or go out, look out the window. With whom do we share the garden, and with whom do we share our nature place? So I'm looking at Stone. Stone, you're at home probably. With whom do we share the garden around your house? Probably a lot, right? And Elon, with whom do we share the garden? Um, can you show people? <laughs> yes. Did you? They're everywhere. They even come in my house. Pincher beetles, pincher bugs. They're black. And are there pinchers on their rear or in the front? I think they're in the back. Mm -hmm. But they also have a mouth. So they have two ways to get you. Do you guys know anything about the pincher bugs? Yeah, they're sometimes in um, Russian doll pictures. Okay. I'm hearing some answers here in our classroom. I will say, I heard Elon, he said, if you threaten them, they might get you. They were on my leg and biting me because I didn't even know they were on my leg. They wanted to go down. Hope. They can come on the lunch table when you're not even paying attention. 
They like to eat dead stuff. They're not gonna climb up my banana tree and start eating the living leaf, but they will eat the dead leaves. They like the dead stuff. We call them decomposers because they break it down and they turn it to something else. I'm really gonna invite you today to think about, again, with whom we share the garden and try and draw a picture. Here's our book. All right, let me remember. I think we can finish this book today. The ants were traveling in a big glass ball. They, were, they had left um, the fishing net. The big glass ball broke free of the fishing net and they floated on the ocean for a long, long time. This is a big ocean and they were so lucky to come on the shore and where this fisherman in Hawaii saw them and they realized they had to get out. So they stamped their feet all at once and they were so powerful at stamping their feet that the, gr the glass ball broke. Can you see that? Can you see that? The glass ball broke and the fisherman's hands are, ah! So we have one fisherman in Japan and he loses his glass ball and this fisherman in Hawaii finds them. And his name is Keola. At this very moment, Keola reached for the blue green ball and quickly splashed his way back to the shore with his new toy in his arms. On closer, he was, on closer inspection, he was amazed to find it was filled with scrambling, tiny, crawling creatures, the likes of which he had never seen before in his whole life. Keola waded up the beach and along the dry sand, staring with fascination into the ball. This caused him to stumble over a rock and the glass ball flew out of his arms and crashed into a hundred pieces against a rock. Do you guys notice that yesterday when I read you that story, I saw the picture and I made a kind of like an assumption. I thought that the ants stamped their feet and broke the glass ball. Do you ever do that? Look at the pictures and make you the story? That's fine, but now I'm realizing there's another story I didn't even know. We do that, right? We make a story in our head and then we find out, oh, it's something else going on. So, a hundred pieces against the rock. The ants went flying through the air in all directions. Keola returned to his net and spear with a heavy heart. Hoped he would find another magic ball while he was fishing. Arisan, the ant, recovered from the shock of being tossed on the sand and looked around. All about him, his kinfolk, kinfolk, those were his people, were picking themselves up and one another up and looking a bit dazed. I said to stamp your feet at the signal, he said crossly. I didn't say to jump up and down and destroy our ship. <laughs> See, Arisan made the same assumption that I did. He, he thought that the jumping made it break, but it was the glass on the rock. However, he soon recovered his good humor and leadership. Come, my friends, our voyage is over. Let us head for dry land before the next wave. Well, that was a good idea. You ever make a sandcastle on the shore and the wave gets it? The, heat, the, the ant knew about that. Okay. So Arisan led the procession of ants up the beach till they came to Keola's grass shack. They looked all around. No one was home. Funny, this house was completely different from the hut they left in far off Japan. They entered the house. There was a grass mat on the floor, and in one corner was a big wooden platter filled with strange goodies. Bananas, stalks of sugar cane, mountain apples, breadfruit, coconuts, and a fresh lay of fragrant ginger blossoms lay over the side. The banquet was ready. Aha, this smells like food, declared their leader, and they fell into the welcome feast. First the ants tasted the sweet nectar from the ginger flowers. Then they loved the sweet milk and the meat of the coconut. No one lingered very long over the sticky poi. But when they tried the juice from the sugar cane, they knew indeed this was the land of honey. Here we are, this is our last page. Arisan rubbed his stomach and rapped for attention. That means this, he went, everybody. Fellow ants, he said, what do you think of this land I picked out for us? The oldest cousin rose to his feet and said, three cheers for Arisan. Bansai, bansai, bansai. I vote that we stay right here. Hurrah, shouted all the ants, except for the smallest cousin, who had fallen sound asleep under a stalk of sugar cane. 
And so it was that all the little family of ants found their way to Hawaii and started a new colony. Only now, instead of saying banzai, they have learned to say aloha. Generations of ants have thrived in the new land of honey. The legend of their trip in the extra large glass ball has been handed down from generation of ants to generation of ants in Hawaii. So anytime you find a glass ball on the beach in Hawaii, please do peek inside. You might be surprised. This reminds me of family stories of when we say, my grandma used to live on this farm, or we, used to, we could say, my grandpa, my grandpa had to leave his home and go to a new country. So I also am thinking about, how did you get here? How did you get here? You were born here, yeah? Some of you were born here, and some of you came here, and some of you have grandparents that came, or just moms and dads. It's so important to remember where we came from because then it can help us remember our stories and learn about our traditions that make us who we are. So, what did I invite you to do today? I'm gonna give you a clue. I invited you to do something today, to color in a page, to draw a picture of someone we share the garden with. A pincher bug could be fun. I think I'm gonna draw a picture bug today. If you would like to try a pincher bug, when we come back together, we'll compare our pincher bugs. You can help me brush mine up. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. Aloha. Thank you, Jackie. For my next one, go out the door. Let's move around. Now, I'm thinking about what I would do that is fun to do for you guys, but also fun to do for uh, people at home. And I was thinking it would be fun to jump rope. Um, maybe we could jump rope right here, in fact. So I think that we might be able to do that. So let's, let's do this. I will get the jump rope. You guys can put your masks on. And Elon, will you hold the other side of this? I can. I hope I'm going to do this side, actually. I think it's going to be too short. I hope you can come over here, Elon. I'm going to pull you in a little bit. All right, hope you stand there, and we're going to turn it for you. Ready? Set. Here we go. Jump. Oh, my God. Ready? Ready? Set. Good. And three. Good try. Now switch places with Elon. Stay apart. I'm seeing this. It's going to be very hard. So actually, instead of switching places, next time you will drop the rope, and the next person will come. So Sabella, will you come around by the window and wait for Hope to wait for Elon? Yeah, right there is good. Perfect. Here we go. Ready? Jump. Oh, that was our bad. Yeah, that was my bad. Here we go. And you ready and go. Hope I need to move this way a little bit. Ready, set, go. 
Ready, set, go. <laughs> One more time. Ready, set, go. Jump. Good. Keep going. Good. Here we go again. Other way. And jump. And jump. Good. Look at this. That's always the easier way for me. One more time. One, two, ready, jump. Nicely done. I think you did do that on a jump rope. All right, Sibylla, you go out this way. Ron can stay to the middle, and Hope can take the turn again. The turn. One, two, ready, yep. Yep, don't go too fast, Hope. One, two, follow my, watch my hand as I go. Good. Yes, very good. Okay, you go out and you take Hope's turn. I'm just trying to do like the power. Okay, my move is. My arm is so sore from. Go ahead, Hope. So they'll grab the end of the rope. But can you come and One, and two, one, two, ready, up. Try again. One, two, ready, other way. Yes. Jump, and jump, and jump, and jump. Good. One more time. Here we go. And. Excellent job. I'll just take it from there. Perfect. So we don't have to get too close together. All right. Now. So now we're going to. What? No. <laughs> it's not All right. Now, um, Sibylla, if you'll stand right here, and um, Ilan, if you'll stand over there, and Hope, if you stand right there, and I'm going to go on my knees so I'm the same height as Sibylla. And we'll do Miss, pretend I'm clapping with her. Miss, ready? Lou, pretend you're clapping with him. One, two, here we go. Miss Lucy had a baby. She named him Tiny Tim. She put him in the back.
thumbs off the floor. There we go. Nice. Sibylla, you can crab walk or bear walk back to your desk. That way. There we go. Very nice. I'm coming. And I will grab walk over to my spot. All right. Keep on going till you make it. No problem. No rush. No and problem, no I'll find my. could get your attention over here. And did anybody see yesterday's lesson when we were looking at this? No. Yes. You did? Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cover these back up and we're going to go through these again. Because other people who will go through them a little faster than last time. All right. So now we have here, what do you see in this picture right here? Raise your hand. Hope. Cookie. A cookie. What do you see right here? Ilan. Bear. A bear. Let's see what's here. Sibylla, what do you see there? Cookie. A cookie. And this cookie is cut in two parts. In this picture, I have, I'm going to show you this. In this picture, I have a, a one cookie and one bear. And the bear eats the whole cookie. This one is cut into parts. And so what happens in the next picture? Ilana, do you remember from yesterday? Mm -hmm. What cookie did we have? Let's see what we have. Oh, dog. two dogs each ate how much of a cookie? Two. Half each ate a cookie. Each ate part of a cookie, a half a cookie. Two dogs ate half a cookie. And now, here we have a cookie cut in how many parts? Four, five, four, three, four. You sure? Yep. Four. Two plus two is four. Two plus two, two. two. I see four parts of that cookie. You see four parts? Mm -hmm. Those are fourths. And each of the animals in the next page, look, a cookie animal. Cookie broken two, two animals. Cookie broken four. What do you think is going to be here? Two animals. Four. Four animals. Because each animal can eat one fourth. Each mouse gets one little part of the cookie. One fourth of the cookie. Okay? And then on the next day, we have. Uh, what's that? Sandwich. A sandwich. One whole sandwich. One whole bamwich. One whole bamwich. Sandwich bamwich. And here we have one bear. bear. And one bear eats one whole sandwich. Next we have a sandwich. What do you think this sandwich is going to look like? Uh, two dogs. Maybe two. cut in two pieces, right? And sure enough, there is the sandwich. Cut in two pieces. And what do you think is going to be on this picture? Um, four. Let's see. Two dogs. Cookie, animal, cookie, two animals. Bear. Cookie, four animals. Oh, two back to one again. Dogs. One sandwich, two one bear. Two animals. Two dogs each get one half of the sandwich. And today is Tuesday, the 10th, so we'll stop right there. Let's say the month of the year and understand why this is November. Let's see what we have time for. Uh, no, let's not do that. Let's move on to um, our form drawing. So you need your main lesson book. And if you do not have your main lesson book, I will, but you do, right? Okay. Here's your main lesson book. It was very nice. And you turn to the very next blank page. 
And if you, since some of you did not see yesterday's lesson, then I will give you a chalkboard for you to practice that form right there. And you have a chalkboard already. So, and you have a chalkboard, but it's kind of a small one. You can practice again. And Isn't it a chalkboard? No, it's not. That's not. Why don't you use this one? And then you erase those space. And hope I'll give you a piece of chalk. And here's what I I want to talk you through this. So I have a piece of chalk, and I'm going to do this form, and I'll tell you how I do it. I start over on the side of my chalkboard, like this, and I go up the top with a curved line up to the top no just use your chalk for now just practice with the chalkboard up to the top with a curved line and then go start to go back down but then go backwards along nearby but not too close and getting farther and farther and farther away from this line as you go and then I go down, and I'm going to come up again. Up, 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 And then down, 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 er, stop. And backwards, nearby the other line, but getting farther and farther and farther and farther away from it till I'm actually going away. Again, starting trying down here. Up, 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 and down a little bit and stop. And I can go back along this line just for a second or two, and then I get go away from the line, a little further away, a little further away, farther and farther and farther and farther away until I'm actually going away from it. And then up the top of the wave, the crest of the wave, and stop, and back down, 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 all the way to the bottom trough of the wave okay so I'm going to do it again up here and you can now turn to your main lesson book great practices excellent yeah so now you're going to switch to a crayon and you're going to turn your main lesson book the other way you can turn your main lesson book the other, the other way like this way and you're going to get a crayon Turn it, hopefully you get your main lesson book out. Um, I don't have it. Oh, I thought, that's right, you don't. Thank you for letting me see that. Get a crayon out. And we'll make two lines in your main lesson book. Similar to this. So we'll, there's, a, there's going to be a top section and a bottom section, just like we just did. You're going to take your crayon, and you're going to go up, 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 stop. Come back along the same way, but get farther and farther and farther off the path. So you reach down the trough of this wave, and then back up, 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 and start to go down, and er, stop and go back along the way, but get farther and farther and farther and farther away from it. Great. 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 And then do one more line of them. That's really good. Do one more line of them. And then, if you finish early, you can. I did look up about an ant, and an ant does have a big middle section called the thorax, which is a word that means kind of like neck. For us, it means neck. And it has a head, and it's got a back end that's even a bit more bulbous, balloon like. And all of its legs come off this middle section. And the legs have like three, three parts. Just like we have three parts. One part, 
two parts and a hand part. So here's like the upper arm, the forearm, and the hand. They all come off this middle section. So you can take a pencil and draw, if you want to, draw a little ant on the wave. And then the other one comes back. So one, two, three, like a zigzag. One, two, three. One, two, three. And now I've got my ant surfing on the wave like Auntie Jackie talked about yesterday. All right. So we can come back to that later if you're not done. And don't write anything or draw anything else on there right now. So just, just, it's okay. Just do what's, just do the, just follow the direction. Don't add anything extra. Just do, just do what I did. It's okay. No worries. It's good practice what you did. All right. So now we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the story that I told yesterday. And if you did not, uh, hear the story that I told yesterday, then um, then it'll be the first time you hear it, and it'll be a new story for you. So I think, uh, Milan, you're the only one who heard the story from yesterday. And do you remember the main character of the story? What? Do you remember the story from yesterday? I'll give you a hint. Did you watch the lesson from yesterday or no? I don't know. Not sure. Okay. So... I'll retell the story for those. Okay, so there was, a, there was a, a, a couple, a man and a woman, who really wished they had a child, but they didn't have any children. And one day when the old lady was, the lady was, the mother, the woman was poking the fire with a stick, she said, you know, I just so wish, I just wish so much that I had a child because I, my life does not feel finished without having a child. And, and she said, even if he was just as, tiny as a thumb, even if he was just a tiny little child, I would still love him with all my heart to the end of my days. Well, sure enough, not that long after, she had a baby and it was no bigger than my thumb. And they loved the little baby so much, even though he was super tiny and he never got any bigger. He got older and learned to talk and walk and do all the things that children know how to do, but he always stayed just this size. He was clever and thoughtful and friendly and smart. And he uh, was helpful and everything you could wish for in a little, in a little child. And, but he never grew up any taller than he was. And so one day the father was going out to the forest to get some firewood to sell at the market. And he said, oh, I sure wish that somebody could drive the cart. There's a horse and a cart that he brought out to the woods with him to put the firewood on to bring to market. And he always has to stop cutting and go and get the horse and the cart and bring it a little further and then keep on walking back and forth, cutting firewood and then going back to get the horse and cart. And he really wished he had a little helper for him to come and help him with his, with his work. But, and he said that out loud. And Tom Thumb, that was his name, by the way. They just called him Tom Thumb because he was no bigger than my thumb. And they said, little Tom Thumb. Tom Thumb said, I can do it, Father. And the father said, you were no bigger than my thumb. How are you going to drive a horse and cart? Never mind that, Father. I will come at the appointed time. Just tell Mother to ask Mother to harness the horse and make, make her ready. And so Tom Thumb sat on the horse, went after his father had left in the woods, got on top of the horse's head, and whispered into the horse's ear, G to go right ha to go left and giddy up to go forward and woe to stop and steered the horse just fine by whispering in his ear and holding on to his ears a little bit pointing him in the right direction well he went across down the road into the forest and happened to meet a couple of men and they saw a horse and cart going by with nobody driving it because they couldn't see little tom thumb sitting on the horse's head what in the world is going on? I've never seen such a thing. A horse and cart that drives horse and, cor <laughs> horse and cart that drives itself? Not possible. So they thought, follow it along and see what was what. So they got to the, the horse finally uh, stopped near a man who was cutting firewood and they said, 
how is it that your horse and cart come straight to you with no driver? And Tom Thumb shouted up from the top of the horse's head, I am here, you cannot see me very well, but I have driven the horse here myself. The two men looked at little Tom Thumb, so how could there be a little man so small? He was a teenager by this time and full of adventure. And they said, well, we would like to buy this little man from you and we will take him to, from town to town and show him to everybody and people will gladly pay money to see such a marvel. And the, oh, the father said, I would never sell my son for any money in the world. Please don't ask for such a thing. And Tom Thumb said, whispered into his father, jumped up onto his father's shoulder and whispered into his ear, Father, it's okay. Sell me away. I'll soon return. And so he accepted a big piece of gold for in return for his son. His son went off with the two men and they said, well, how will we carry you? You cannot keep up with us. You walk too so slow because your feet are so tiny. And he said, never mind that. Just put me upon your hat so that I can see the sights of the world as we walk through. And so they did. And they walked along and walked along toward the village. And suddenly Tom Thumb said, stop. You must put me down. And they said, we're not going to put you down. We're going to continue on to the town. No, you must put me down immediately, said Tom Thumb in an authoritative tone. And the men said, well, okay. They Oh, why? Well, put him down on the ground, and immediately he scurried away through the grass and found a little mouse hole and disappeared down in the mouse hole. Well, the two men got very upset and angry and started poking around in the grass and trying to find him, but they went away disappointed. Well, Tom Thumb walked along the road and walked along the road, trying, thinking he was going to head back home, but instead he met two more men. These two men were talking to, the, to each other and did not see Tom Thumb sitting down in the grass and said, how will we steal the gold from the parson? The parson has hidden away all the people's gold down in the dungeon of the church with barred gate in front of it and no one can get into it. We should go steal it. Tom Th said, Thumb said, I'll tell you how you can steal that gold. The two men looked around, what? Where is that coming from? I hear a voice, but I don't know where it's coming from. Down here, look down below, I'm down here by your feet. They looked down and saw in the grass a man no bigger than your thumb. And he said, here's what we can do. You take me along to the church dungeon and I will slip right through the bars of the, of the cell in which the gold is being kept and I will just pass it right out to you, easy as pie. And so the two men agreed, the two robbers agreed that that would be a good plan. And so the three of them went together to down in there, and Tom Thumb slipped between the bars, and when he got in there, he had a plan. And his plan was this. He started shouting at the two men, would you like me to pass you all the gold from in this, in this cage, or just some of it? And there was a shh, be quiet. Someone's gonna hear you. And sure enough, there was a woman upstairs cooking in the kitchen, and she heard some shouting from down in the, in the basement, and she, ran down there to go get, but the two, the two robbers had run away because they were so afraid they would get caught because Tom Thumb kept shouting, I see a lot of gold in here. Shall I send it all out to you? <laughs> so he's trying to get someone to come down. So sure enough, she came down the stairs. The men heard them coming down the steps and they ran off. Tom Thumb hid himself very thoroughly and the woman looked around and looked around and could not see anything and thought maybe she'd been dreaming. So she went back to the kitchen. Well, Tom Thumb found a, a nice barn with lots of hay piled up in the upstairs loft and some horses and cows down in the, in the stalls. So he thought, I'll just pass the night here, snuggled up in this hay. And he took himself a nice deep sleep in the hay. Well, early, early in the morning, the, the woman who cares for the cows came out um, and to feed the cows. And she took a pitchfork, grabbed a big bunch of hay, and Tom was fast asleep inside the hay. And she dropped it down into the manger for the cow to eat, and the cow gobbled up Tom Thumb before he even knew what was happening. He woke up just as he was being swallowed and saw that he was being swallowed down a cow's, a cow's throat. And he got down there and said, well, this is not this cow's stomach and no door to came in. And the way I came in is full of hay coming back down. And he tried to fight his way back up toward the horse's mouth, but more and more hay, the horse kept, uh, the cow kept eating. And so 
Uh, he couldn't fight his way past all that hay coming back, continuing to come down the horse's mouth. And so, and so he, um, he shouted, no more hay, no more hay, no more food, feed me no more. And the woman said, well, that's the same voice I heard last night in the dungeon. I don't know where that's coming from. So she ran upstairs to get the parson who's in charge of the part of the church. And she said, there's a cow, the cow is bewitched, the cow is speaking with a human voice. And so the parson came downstairs and, and sure enough heard Tom Thumb yelling from the inside the cow, no more food. And so he said, he called the butcher right away to come and slaughter this cow that's bewitched. And so the butcher came and led the cow away and killed it and butchered it up for meat for people and threw the stomach along with all the rest of the guts into the compost heap. While well, Tom Thumb was working his way out of that stomach, trying to squeeze himself out. <laughs> and sure enough, a wolf came by and gobbled up that stomach, Tom Thumb and all. Well, now Tom Thumb was stuck inside a wolf's belly. And, and, but he had a, th a thought. And he said, little Mr. Wolf, I know where there's a much better meal for you than cow guts. Let's go. I'll tell you where to go. And you can have all the pies and cakes and all kind of victuals that you could possibly imagine to eat. And so the wolf said, I don't know where that voice is coming from, but I'll go along with that. And so he goes, and Tom Thumb directs him down the road to his very own parent's house. So the wolf gets all the way to his parent's house and says, look, squeeze between those bars and that's where all the food is. So the wolf squeezed between and ate and ate and ate and ate and ate until he was fat. And then guess what happened? He's so fat that he couldn't get up back out through the bars. And so he squeezing out through the bars, but Tom Thumb started yelling for his father and mother. His father and mother came running. They heard his voice, but they didn't know where he was. He said, I'm inside the wolf's belly. So the father and the mother came down to kill the wolf and he hit the wolf over the head with the back of a axe handle or axe head and knocked the wolf senseless and he left, the, left this world with his life, left his, left his life. And so they cut the wolf open, they made a nice fur blanket out of his skin and Tom Thumb lived with his mother and father the rest of his days and they were all happy for the rest of their days. So that's the story of Tom Thumb, and we don't have time to draw a picture anymore, so we'll, we'll draw a picture of Tom Thumb tomorrow. All right, so snip, snap, snout, or so it is, and so it was, and so it shall be, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Actually, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's a holiday, and we'll see you Thursday.